Hey everyone, Captain Owl here, and today I'm going to be bringing you a new and improved auto super smelter for your 1.17 worlds, or your survival series, or whatever world you're playing on. Let's get right into it. Before we start this YouTube video, according to analytics, only a couple of you guys think that I'm not underrated. So if you think that I am underrated, please go ahead and hit the sub button. It really helps motivate me and make more videos in the future. Thank you. Now this build has been designed by Sourceless himself. He's very talented. Please go check him out in the description down below. Now the materials for this build are as follows. You will need 64 and 43 oak logs, which brings a total of 107 oak logs, and a, 64, a stack of oak planks and 41 oak planks, which brings us a total of 105 oak planks. You will need 23 power rails, six regular rails, five redstone dust, three redstone repeaters, 25 hoppers, six chests, one redstone lamp, seven furnaces, 44 glass, three minecart with hoppers, one, or uh, sorry, six droppers, eight observers, four redstone, blocks of redstone, I mean, redstone comparator, a note block, a lever, a sm two smooth stone slabs, three item frames, and your filler blocks, or the blocks, or sorry, not the blocks, <laughs> my bad, the materials that you will be smelting, including the fuel itself. Before you start out with this build, I would highly, highly recommend making a grid like I have here. The dimensions are 14 across and seven down, and put a little grid in the middle so you know where I'm placing blocks because this build can get a little bit confusing. To start, you're going to go to this corner right here and you're gonna build eight blocks up. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then you're gonna to go to this corner on the opposite side and build eight blocks up around the same height as the other one. Then you're going to skip a block here and you're gonna build another eight blocks up like so. So you have three pillars right here. Then you're gonna go six blocks in from this log right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and you're gonna place another pillar right here, eight blocks high. Then make another pillar here and here, both with eight blocks high on either side. Your layout should look like this. Now connect your frames. Start by adding them onto the corner here, connecting them down, across, then down like so, and down and around. Do not cross them here, just keep going. Pass this log, connect them down like this. You should have a frame that looks exactly like this. Then connect your frames on the bottom. Make sure you break this block right here. This is very important that you break this block in particular because this is where the redstone is gonna be connected and connect right here. And then make sure on this block right here, make sure to make the logs at an elevated level. So the frame above a block where it usually is, and make sure this one is also elevated as well. So it should be looking like this. Make sure the rest of the build is also elevated. So pretty much the rest of the build should look like this. Then you're gonna start to fill in the sides right here. You're going to go up with the wooden planks Place a redstone dust at the top, and then fill in the last of this wall right here. So it looks like that. What you then can do is you can fill in the inside of the build right here in the middle with the oak logs and the wooden planks. It's like so. And finally, grab your droppers and bring them all the way up to the top. Shift click as well, just up to this level so it's flat on the oak log. So I kind of messed up with this build. I originally meant it to be six in, but really it is seven. So delete this block, delete this tower, and make sure that this tower is actually moved over to this side. You can then delete this whole wall in general, just because I kind of made a mistake. Uh, make sure that this entire side is actually seven rather than six. Then you're going to want to grab your comparator, face it this way, grab a block, then place a repeater on the opposite side facing this way and set that to three ticks. So it looks like that. And then place another block here and put a redstone dust onto the log. Place a repeater on the opposite side going this way instead of the opposite way and set that one to three ticks as well. Then place a redstone here 
and turn this comparator on. Place a block here, and now it's finally time to place down your observers. You're gonna place an observer down here and down here. Make sure that they're facing down, like so. So this next step is gonna be a little bit tricky. You're gonna grab your observers and you're gonna place them down, facing down, like this. And then you're gonna make sure that they're facing sideways. So place both of them here, break this one, and make sure that all these observers going up are facing sideways. So you're gonna to want to keep on doing this over and over again up till the top until this last dropper. Don't place any more after this oak log. So it cannot be flush with the oak log. You're gonna to have to keep this, just like this. Stay like this. Then grab your hoppers, place two down, and place a block right here and a block right here. Place redstone dust on this observer, and then place another observer facing sideways. This one's a little bit tricky. You're gonna have to keep on doing that and make sure that is facing sideways as well. So it looks like this. Then grab your note block, place it here, and grab another observer and make it face down, and then place a block on top of that note block might be a little bit tricky to get it, but once you get it, you're pretty much set. Also, one thing to note is make sure that this hopper right here is facing up. So the butt is facing up and the face is facing down. I have arrows right here. You can download them on Vanilla Tweaks so that I know which side the observer is facing. The next step that we're going to do is finally test the system out with the droppers. So we're going to place one item in here and that should shoot up all the way up to the top to dispense this item up at the top. So that means it is working. You have successfully built your little shooter contraption. Now come around to the front side of the build, place a hopper going into this dropper right here, another hopper onto the side, and another hopper going into that one, and finally another hopper coming out of that one. So this, these arrows should indicate where all the hoppers should point. This one going into that one, that one going into that one, that one going into that one, and then that finally going into the shooter contraption. Once you are finished, you can finally fill in this area with the wooden blocks that you choose. Make sure to just fill in this area. Don't fill in anything else, just this portion right here. And you can actually fill in this side as well. So it looks nice. Once you're done filling with the wood planks, go ahead and place a block here, block here, delete this block, place a block down here, place a block here, place a block here, delete this block, and make sure that your setup looks exactly like mine. Again, make sure that you have your redstone at the back, otherwise this won't work. Place a repeater facing this way on the side. Do not set it to three ticks, just leave it as it is. Then finally, you can put in your seven furnaces here. If you want, you can place a furnace here, place a furnace here, delete this furnace, and then place in the remaining furnaces all the way down until almost the very end of the build so that it reaches seven. Okay, now I know that this is actually eight instead of seven, but please don't go yelling at me in the comments. Oh, Captain L, it's actually eight. I know it's eight. I've counted it myself. You can choose eight or seven, however you choose, but I personally choose eight because you can get more out of it. Then you can place down your rails, place a block here, a block here, delete this block, and make sure that you place your hoppers down all along the sides. Make sure that they're facing down into the furnaces. You can shift block on the top so that you don't have to, you know, make sure that you open the furnace. Then grab your rails and your regular rails, this is very important. Place a power rail here, a regular rail here, and then place the rest of the power rails all the way along the top. You might have to shift click to enter the rails onto the hoppers. Once you reach the end, place a rail and then a power rail at the end. You can then go ahead and fill in the rest of your wooden planks and place a hopper on top of this wooden block with another hopper going into it. Then you're going to place your hoppers along the back side of the build, such as over here. You might want to break these two blocks just so you can place the hoppers down into the furnaces as needed. Place them all the way down until the very end, like so. Now grab your redstone and place two blocks right along the sides here. So both of these rails or all of these rails are lit up at the top and also power your rails down below here as well. Again, make sure that your last rail is a regular rail and then a power rail so that you don't mess up. 
then you can finally fill in the rest with the wooden planks so it looks a little bit nicer. Coming along to the front here, you're going to be placing two wooden blocks right here and a power rail on the front. Make sure that this is not connecting here, so you might want to connect a rail and then a power rail down here. So again, make sure that these don't connect. It might be a little bit hard to do at first, but once you get it, you should be good to go. You might want to break these two to get this actually connected. So this, this, and then whoop, one second. This, yeah, this, this is a little bit complex. So like that. So again, you might want to make sure that you do this correctly. One, two, one, two. So make sure that these two are separate. Don't connect them at all. Then place a block here, two blocks here, and this is where you're gonna be placing your chests. Now, you're gonna be placing a chest here, a chest here, and a chest here. So these are your three chests, but I would first go with two. Instead, once you get the third chest, once everything is finished, then you can place down your third chest and test it and see if it works. Now this time it might be a little bit complex. Make sure to break this hopper, break this hopper, then place a hopper on top of here, and a hopper going into that hopper as well, and two hoppers going on top of each other just like so. And then finally, another hopper going into this hopper so that everything is connected via the hoppers. Then fill in this space right over here. You're gonna grab your lever and place it down this way. Then grab a redstone lamp and place it on top of this block so that when you turn it on, this redstone lamp will turn on and indicating that you are have the system turned on. So again, let's flick this redstone lever. If it turns on and everything turns on, and if this redstone turns on, if this redstone turns on, and if this redstone turns on, then you have done it. You've successfully made this work. You can then place your final chest up at the top, and now we're gonna begin with the minecart hoppers. So with this build, there are gonna be three hopper minecarts that are gonna be running this entire time. There's gonna be one that runs all the way down to the bottom, there's gonna be one over here, and then there's gonna be one at the back. So first off, you're gonna have to grab one of your hopper minecarts, actually two of your hopper minecarts, and you're gonna have to grab one here and place them one here. Now this next step is very important. Make sure that you have placed this, behind this block, there should be a wooden block right here, so that when you break this block, which we're gonna do in a second, the minecart is gonna fall and the power rail is not gonna go into the hopper. This is very important because if the power rail goes into the hopper, the whole thing can mess up and clog up your system. So make sure that you have a block right here. Just to test this out, you can now break this block. A minecart should fall with your, uh, with your power rail and you can pick up the power rail at the back. Make sure that you have that block covered. Otherwise, the entire system will fail. Now on the whole, this might seem a little bit counterintuitive, like, Owl, why are you doing this? Why did you break that block and let that minecart fall? I'll tell you, because we're gonna be replacing that with a stone slab, and we are going to be placing another rail on top. And go ahead and place your power rail on top of the stone slab. Then what you're going to do is you're gonna break this one, right, adjacent to the oak log. You're gonna break this rail and place a block of redstone here and place another power rail over that so that every single rail here, except for the end ones, are powered. Also, make sure to power the end one as well. I kind of forgot about that, sorry. And then you can finally fill in your other wall here and then place your final minecart with hopper on the bottom hopper rail. Now with all of this, it's finally time to test out the system and see if it truly works, if yours truly works, then you can follow me. So what you're gonna do to test out the system is you're going to just flick this one lever and see if all the, har the hopper with minecarts move. And if all of, they, all of them move, then you're pretty much golden. Uh, I forgot one thing, put a last minecart with hopper down here. Also make sure to place a redstone dust here and make sure to also fill in this wall because I tried testing this machine and all of a sudden the minecart flew out of the machine. So you might want to fill in this wall as well before you actually test it. Uh, let's replace that minecart down onto the rail. Hold on, give me a second. There we go. Uh, and now let's finally flick on this lever. And if your machine works, all the three minecarts should be going back and forth across the whole entire super smelter. 
this means that you have done it. You have officially made your super smelter functional. Now this last final bit is purely for aesthetic purposes. This is just for decoration. You can do this or you can leave it just how this farm is. You can copy me or you can just leave how the farm is looking. So let's turn this farm off for a second. Let's grab our glass and our wood. We're gonna be placing a wood block here so that we can actually finally see this. And we're gonna be placing a wood block here. And we are also gonna fill in this entire area up with glass. Once you're done with that, you can finally go ahead onto the back here and you can finally fill in this area with the wood that you want. And you can fill in the back here with a lot of wooden planks. Make sure to not fill in the ones that have the minecart or the redstone in them just because then the machine won't work. Just fill in this area here and make sure to not replace any of the redstone. Just place down wooden planks like I go here. Make sure to go around the redstone and just place down wooden planks so you can hide the redstone if needed. So once you're all done, go ahead and fill in these wooden blocks right here. And now finally fill in these as well. And then you have your three chests. You can finally put in your three item frames and your filler blocks or your blocks that you're, or sorry, not your blocks, your items that you're gonna be putting into the chests. So place them down. Make sure to put the coal or the fuel in the middle. This is very important because the fuel goes into the middle because that's where the hoppers are aligned to the middle. Make sure to put your input and your output at the end. You might want to put signs down, fuel, output, input, but this is how it goes. This is how you can do it. You can put any item in that is smeltable, uh, like anything regarding glass, anything, pretty much anything. Uh, I, put, I put pork chop in and then pork chop out so you can see how this works. So pretty much I put in a lot of pork chop in. I can put in tons. Uh, and it will just feed. It will just feed the system. It doesn't even matter which order you put it in. It will just feed the system and it will just automatically start doing that. It will start filling it up. And then once you turn it on, that's when the machine starts going. So pretty much, oh, whoops, I forgot to put in the coal. Um, yeah, make sure to put in the coal. <laughs> make sure to put in the fuel so that you can have fuel as it's going. Um, and pretty much you can just fuel it up and then turn it on and it should be working smoothly. Now, once it's working, you can check your output source and all of a sudden your cooked pork chop will be showing up. Now, this is a very, very fast super smelter, which is why I recommend it the most. It's pretty hard to make, but once you get it, it's pretty, pretty nice and rewarding that you actually made it. And it's very, very fast with all the items that you smelted. So this has been Captain Al. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Follow my socials. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Good on.